The natural curiosity of man has always nurtured the need to explore. Setting out for the unknown and tackling enormous obstacles are the backbone of adventure. Land Rover vehicles have been an integral part of these forays for nearly half a century now. They have transported hardy souls to remote regions, to meet local people, share experiences, study ancient cultures, and savor the natural wonders of the world. At Land Rover, we heartily applaud these endeavors and encourage the spirit of exploration. It isn't necessary to go to the extreme to experience an adventure. There is plenty to do and see quite close to home. With the new Range Rover 4.0 SE, you have the freedom to explore your own territory in a rather exceptional way. But first, it's important to learn some basic off-roading techniques and become familiar with the operation and capabilities of your vehicle. For starters, Land Rover dealers conduct off-road instructional days called wheels events. These are a great introduction to four-wheeling. For more advanced technique, spend a few days with Land Rover instructors in locations with spectacular settings and exceptional amenities. Of course, it's not necessary to have formal instruction before taking an off-road trip. We're going to explain some of the principles found in the owner's manual. Some apply for all off-road adventures, such as take along some basic gear, including food, water, and a first aid kit. Remove the front spoiler when you're considering serious off-road driving. Details are in the owner's manual. Responsible off-roading should follow sensible and safe guidelines. Whenever possible, do your exploring with another vehicle. If you can't take a second vehicle, be sure assistance is close at hand, or stay on a less challenging path. Always tell someone staying behind where you plan to go and when you plan to return. The safety considerations engineered into Range Rover should not be taken lightly. Even though front passengers are provided with dual airbags, always wear seat belts for maximum security. Remember the 4.0 SE is taller and a bit wider than average passenger cars. Pay attention to clearance overhead and on the sides. If it's too narrow, fold in the side mirrors. Follow the principles of the Tread Lightly program. Stay on the track, resisting the urge to drive around soft terrain, such as this mud puddle. Thoughtless, irresponsible driving can damage the terrain and lead to closure of recreation areas. Drive only in areas approved for off-road vehicles and observe all rules and regulations. The number one rule from Land Rover experts is local knowledge, all important. This looks a bit oh, steep. What do you say this. we get out and have a look at this okay. one? Do some homework first and inquire about the route you're planning. If the terrain ahead looks questionable, take a moment to get out and investigate. Look for obstacles which could damage the undercarriage and plan a path to drive. When the stretch looks too rough, find another route. Grip the steering wheel firmly on the outside of the rim keeping thumbs clear of the spokes. A sudden kickback from large obstacles or ruts could cause injury. This is the Olympics of off-roading, the annual Camel Trophy competition. Much of the success depends on Land Rover vehicles with their legendary four-wheel drive capabilities. All Land Rover vehicles have permanent four-wheel drive systems. In addition, Range Rover has a viscous coupled center differential, which locks the front and rear axles together automatically, whenever necessary, both on or off pavement. The four-speed automatic transmission is coupled with a two-speed transfer case, providing eight forward and two reverse gears for a wide variety of driving conditions. 
The system is electronically controlled and operated with the new unique H-gate system using one shift lever to access all gear combinations in both high and low ranges. All gears in high range are on the left of the H and those for low are on the right. The shift lever has a two-stage release. The first position is used for normal gear changes in both high and low ranges. The second is deeper and must be used when shifting between high and low range. The procedure is not difficult. Stop the vehicle, pull up on the release lever to the second position and shift to neutral. Move across the gate, wait for the lights to stop flashing and the message center to indicate low range and then shift to the appropriate gear. To shift to high range, simply reverse the procedure. Pull up on the two-stage release to neutral, across, wait, then into high range. The automatic transmission has four shift programs, which are controlled by the mode button to the left of the H. Two programs work in high range and two in low. When traveling around town or for normal highway driving, use normal mode for maximum efficiency. For more responsive performance, engage the sport mode, which will hold the engine in gear longer before upshifting and will downshift more quickly for passing and hill climbing. In low range, when maximum control is required, use manual mode to gain manual control of the transmission and prevent automatic shifting to a lower gear. It's important to become familiar with the transmission combinations and know which work best in specific situations. When traveling well-graded dirt roads, the transmission should be in high range. But when the terrain becomes rough or steep, low range will provide more power. For hill climbs, use third gear, low range. If you cannot complete the climb, apply the foot brake and shift to reverse. Make sure the wheels are straight. Take your feet off the brake and back down slowly. And then try again, using more momentum. For steep downhills, shift to first gear, low range. Take your feet off the brake. Rest them on the floor and let the engine do the work. In most situations, this will provide all the braking needed to ease down slowly and under control. It is not necessary to use heavy braking during a descent. Brake only when absolutely necessary. In most cases, the proper transmission gear combinations can do the work. There are conditions when braking is necessary, such as emergency situations. Range Rover is equipped with the most advanced anti-lock braking system for four-wheel drive sport utility vehicles. When you have to brake quickly, ABS prevents wheel lockup. This means that while braking, you still have the ability to steer. Remember this important detail of ABS. When it is working, do not pump the pedal. Keep your feet firmly on the brake and steer around the obstacle. Another component of the braking system is electronic traction control. When traveling under 30 miles an hour in loose conditions, it will engage automatically when it senses a rear wheel slipping. Power will be transferred to the wheel with the best grip. You will hear a slight clicking of the ABS system and a beep when traction control is working. Venturing off-road actually means driving routes that are unpaved. After all, this is where the adventure, exploration, and appreciation of this remarkable vehicle really take place. Range Rover's suspension system excels in off-roading because it is designed to provide extremely long wheel travel, keeping the wheels on the ground when working through uneven terrain, such as a log or depression. When crossing a ditch, shift to first gear and approach it diagonally. so that as you cross, you'll always have three wheels outside the ditch for better traction.
Range Rover's electronically controlled air suspension system is engineered to make off-road adventures comfortable and successful. The system will adjust the vehicle to five height settings. In normal off-roading conditions, the vehicle should be at standard height. When more clearance is needed, push the up arrow on the rocker switch on the dash to achieve high profile. Just to the right is a set of lights showing the selected height and when a change is taking place. When high profile is reached, the light will remain on and a symbol on the instrument panel will confirm it. This raises the vehicle approximately one and a half inches and is a good position when there are abrupt changes in the angle of terrain. You must determine that the front and rear of the vehicle will clear. Approach the slope slowly and make sure that no part of the vehicle touches before the front wheels do. This is called the approach angle. Drive slowly and make sure that the departure angle allows the rear to clear completely too. If a wheel loses contact with the ground or the vehicle becomes high centered, the air suspension system will automatically assume the extended profile position, lowering the wheel almost three inches from standard position to help regain traction. For most off-roading and in normal driving situations, the vehicle should be in standard ride height. When traveling above 50 miles per hour, the vehicle will automatically adopt a more aerodynamic profile by lowering approximately one inch. At any time, the driver may lock the vehicle into the standard position for special situations such as towing. For ease of entry or exit, push the down button to reach access height. This can be done up to 40 seconds before or after coming to a stop, providing your foot is not on the brake pedal when you push the button. And remember, the vehicle must be shifted to park, foot off the brake pedal, and all doors closed for the system to actually work. For easy access, it will lower the vehicle two and a half inches below standard height. This position can also be locked in when headroom is restricted, such as in a parking garage. While the suspension system will help you to work through uneven stretches, there are several other factors to consider too. You must remember the undercarriage of the vehicle particularly which area has the greatest ground clearance. The axle differentials are the lowest point, about eight inches from the ground under the driver's side with the vehicle at standard height. The highest point is 10 inches under the passenger. Hitting a rock at speed could damage the differentials. It's good practice to put the obstacle under the passenger to take advantage of the maximum clearance. When possible, try to avoid an obstacle by driving around it. However, keep in mind that the sidewalls, inside and out, are the most vulnerable parts of the tire. Try to avoid any rubbing, scuffing, or pinching. If you're not sure whether the axles or differentials will clear, consider driving over the obstacle. Line up the vehicle so that both front and rear wheels will go directly on top of it, and drive over slowly and carefully. Ease each wheel down slowly to prevent bouncing using the brakes if necessary. When the stretch is long and there are more than a few obstacles to consider, look ahead and pick a path or line to drive through. Try to keep questionable areas in sight to your left and steer around obstacles on the right. Water crossings are another situation when clearance is critical because obstacles may be hidden. Remember to set the handbrake every time you exit the vehicle. It's good practice to first check the depth and nature of the bottom. Make sure it is firm and clear of debris and that the water is not deeper than 20 inches or about to the top of the wheel rim. This is another time when high profile is a good idea. When driving through water, use third gear, low range. Set your speed to create a bow wave, but avoid splashing to help keep the engine compartment dry. When leaving water, apply light pressure to the brakes to help dry them out. 
In most cases, you can now resume standard height. For many off-road enthusiasts, a great deal of the fun comes with the challenge of driving through soft terrain, such as snow, sand, and mud. Use third gear, low range, and manual mode. Follow the ruts and maintain the momentum using a steady throttle. It's easier to follow an established path than to push through a new one. If a wheel starts to lose traction, ease off on the throttle a bit until it regains a grip. Sometimes when a rear wheel starts to slip, traction control will transfer power to the other rear wheel. You will hear the slight clicking of the ABS system and the beep of traction control. Simply maintain a steady throttle, but not too much to cause wheel spin. After off-roading and before returning to pavement, take a moment to make an inspection. Raise the vehicle to high profile. Check the inside of the wheels for any mud that may have become lodged, the undercarriage for any debris, and the tire for any damage. Once you've mastered these basic skills, you're limited only by your spirit for adventure. Just remember, read your owner's manual for more off-road driving tips. Low-range third gear is suitable for most off-road conditions, including hill climbs. Coming down, first gear, low range, using little or no braking. Remember approach and departure angles. The wheels must touch first and the rear must clear too. When crossing a depression, cross with one wheel at a time. The differentials are the lowest point of the vehicle. The greatest ground clearance is under the passenger. Know what you're driving through. Maintain a steady pace and avoid splashing. Follow the ruts, keep up the momentum, and avoid wheel spin. Finally, speed is never a good idea off-road. You can't avoid obstacles all the time, so hold it down and watch your line. In time, the operation of your vehicle and off-roading technique should become intuitive. Remember to respect the environment and use these tips on every adventure. No matter what the destination, getting there is a great deal of the adventure. And with a remarkably capable Range Rover 4.0 SE, every adventure is exceptional.